Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm fantastic. Time for a vacation vlog. I don't know how great this will be. <laughs> I'll do my best. I'm here with a lot of people, so not a ton of like quiet time or private time to do some vlogging. So there may even be other people's voices in some clips and who knows what, but I'm just kind of going with the flow. There's no objective on this trip, no like going out on boats or, you know, looking for dolphins, anything like that. It's just a very laid back, many, many days of relax. Relax, relax, relax. That's the objective here. But my main objective is to get to Lowe's and find some heliconias, uh, go to some local nurseries, maybe. I don't, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Just kind of going with the flow. So pretty here, everything's making me so happy. Here's a garden tour of the beach house. We have a whole bunch of wax myrtles and some other native shrubs and some saw palmettos. They're everywhere, they're just doing their thing. We didn't have to plant them, they just be happy. Then down here to the right of the lovely pathway, we have some podocarpus, those are going to get Nice and tall and fill out and cover everything up. Look at how cute this pindu is. Lovely batia capitata. So known as the jelly palm. This one's nice and slender. It's skinny. It's been staying on top of things. Some various spurges underneath these sable palms. Lots of sable palms because, you know, this is Florida. So they're just, they're, they're happy. They're right at home because native. Then in this raised bed up here, we have some set crescia, the purple heart plant. Some Rulia right here. Lovely, lovely Rulia. I love the purple on these Rulias. One of my favorites. And then up here, what's what, what do we got going on up here? Have a nice blend of a white pea-sized gravel with some darker gray smooth stones with a nice pathway outlining things here. Gorgeous hibiscus. Can't remember the name, but I will type it out if I can remember it. These are all set up on drip, you can see. And they only get morning sun, because Florida, very hot. They do a little bit better like that. It's a lot of morning sun, though. Slight aphid problem here on the hibiscus. By slight, I mean rather extreme, but it's alright. I saw some ladybugs over here earlier, so that's not anything that a few ladybugs won't take care of, right? Then alongside the pathway, some nice giant crinum lilies. Love these. Those are going to be absolutely fantastic when they bloom. Some liriope. Then the deep, deep shade under the steps got some cast iron plants. Fantastic plants. They'll just do their thing. You'll stick them in the ground and they're like, all right, I'm good, as long as it's shady. And the same thing on the other side over here with more of the crinum lilies and the orange hibiscus underneath these sable palms lining the stairway. But no pathway on this side, only on the other side. You can only have the pathway on the west side because of feng shui. I have no idea. This isn't my garden. I don't know why they did this. Okay. Uh, I was going to say let's have a look inside, but a lot of people are sleeping right now. I hope that didn't make anyone dizzy. It made me a little dizzy. There we go. Made it in. I was thinking that this view was going to be not so great because of being on the first floor, but actually it's kind of fantastic because you can't see anyone on the beach. It cuts them off. Just below, which is also not a great thing when you're going down to the beach because you're like, oh, the beach is empty, and it's like, oh, children everywhere. But no, I actually kind of like it like this because it gives the illusion that everything's kind of calm. It is calm. You know what I mean? There aren't a lot of people. That's what I was trying to say. I'm still waking up, y'all. Travel kind of rattles my brain a little bit. And if you haven't noticed from the last couple of vlogs, things have been a little bit chaotic and busy leading up to this trip. But I'm thinking what's probably going to go on now is heading into town. And I'm going to swing by a Lowe's and maybe a Home Depot and do a brief look at their plants. I don't know about Home Depot. We'll see. I'm just looking for some heliconias. Just some cheap, cheap heliconias I can throw into my baggage and get home. Because no nobody wants to ship them up north. I don't know why. Because I was saying it's because they don't ship well, but used to get them up north and they looked just fine when they came in. That is what it is when I come down here. It's cheaper to buy them down here anyways because I just make sure I have an extra bag to check. Makes it a lot easier. 
and it's always fun to go to Lowe's and check out what's going on there. And I'm hoping to like walk around and hit up some local nurseries and things like that. So that's what's going on here. Five minutes in explaining things. And so I don't, <laughs> at this point, will have been obvious, probably won't have the timestamps up because it being a vacation vlog, I highly doubt there's anything specific that's going to be going on. It's just going to be like, oh, this is pretty. I'm going to film it. Or maybe, oh, I was a little bit turned. Let's film that. Who knows? I don't know. It's vacation. You can't predict anything right now. But yeah, we'll pick up here in a little bit when I get to Lowe's. And nothing says vacation without stopping off at Lowe's. This is in Destin, which isn't where I'm staying, but I'm out here doing some other things. I'm gonna check out their department, see what's going on over here. Okay, orchid selection, much better. This is like they have orchids that aren't fowls. This is really pretty too. It's a nice, big, healthy, Catlia type. Oh, it's so pretty. Look at those flowers. Gorgeous. Oh, they're bag babies are better too. When the one time, there's only one time that I've seen them up where I live in St. Louis, they're just like hanging on a clip strip. Wasn't great for them. And most of them ended up turning brown and getting clearanced out. And they're nice. Coco de ma bromeliads. That's pretty cool. 10.98. We will try this project ourselves at home. I like it. I have the materials for some Coco de Ma. I've been wanting to do it for a while and just never got around to it. Ooh, they so cute though. Yeah, I like that one. This is, I wanted to do it with my um, Talansia, the Cyanase. Okay, outdoors. I'm gonna carry this around and think about it for a minute. And obviously what I would want to find down here are heliconias because the lows up north can't get them in they're southern region only so I feel like promo pushed or something and I don't think I can get a hold of them they're nice and cheap down here I love these agaves these are beautiful these are those are things I'll be looking at I'm gonna be coming back down here with the car with trucks at some point for a buying trip I don't know I'll be buying things from Lowe's and winding things up with wholesalers These little palmeras are cute that's a nice flower I like that Adajaju, how do you say that? Cute! Have my Heliconia radar on right now. Haven't seen them yet. Some nice ground orchids. Love ground orchids. Some philodendrons. These are the moonlight philodendrons. Nice. Great price. Those are beautiful. Lovely cast iron plants. Great, great plants for shade. If you can grow them where you live, give those a try in the shade. They're tough. I mean, they're just like giant blades of foliage, but that's what's nice about them. They have a good texture. You don't have to do much with them. And I've grown them in my sex garden, zone six garden. They did all right. Um, eventually after one winter, they didn't come back though. But it was like negative 13 degrees or something like that, negative 10. So that wasn't too surprising. Could have mulched them, but I didn't. Look at these caladiums. I was going to say I see some of these stromanthias up here. I want to look at those. Let's see. $6.98. That's great. They're about $25, $30 at home in those tiny pots, which is ridiculous because years ago you could get them in really big pots like this for $30, and these big ones are $12.98. Okay, but the question though, will you fit in my luggage? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you guys remember last fall when I was out here. I brought home, like, a lot of stuff in my suitcase. I could totally make this fit. Have to take all the soil out. I could do it. I don't know if I feel like it, though. You know, space is precious. So I gotta see what else they have here. Nice big Red Star Cordelins. $12.98. Those are so big. Shrimp plants. Philodendron. Elephant ears. How much are you? Not bad. I'm not down with the... Okay, it actually says Borneo Giant on the tag. A lot of these places haven't been labeling what kind of elephant ears they have, which is really annoying. Isn't that Like, don't you want to... I want to know. I want to know what variety I have because they have different growth characteristics. Maybe that's just the stores up north where I live that are doing that. I don't know. Oh, oh my goodness. Look at that foliage. This is Lemon Swirl Australian Brush Cherry. It's a 9 to 11. And absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful. 
better be for that price. Pretty. I like those a lot. <laughs> this big pot of Romeo's, $4.98. That's how much they are for teeny tiny itty bitty ones at home. I mean, they grow like crazy down here, so that's not surprising. That's the case with most of these things. Hey, Persian Shield, how y'all doing? Oh, look at all the little epidendrums. It's so tempting for me to buy. I don't need them. I have tons of them at home. There's no reason to buy them, but I want them. These are so pretty. Just a larger size of the Moonlight Philodendrons. These aren't that much bigger than the ones that were over there. Really pretty, though. Boa Elephant Ear. It said that somewhere. <laughs> there, there we go, right there. I was wondering, because these are the ones that I have at home, and when I got them, they weren't labeled. So I'm glad to see that that's, well, I don't know. Mine are more purple. I don't know. They're pretty. That's all that matters. Variegated oleanders, which look really cute when I'm seeing them in the larger sizes, like when they're grown out on the sides of the roads and in people's yards. I'm not as crazy about them because they kind of look a little bit sunburnt, but that's, it's still cool. More so up close than from afar, I think. It really brightens up a spot, especially with the bright pink flowers. Oh, cute. That's way too heavy to get into my luggage. <laughs> Obviously, that wouldn't even fit. Okay, where are the heliconias? Come on, guys. I've got my radar on. I'm not seeing them. Yucca recurvifolia. Them my faves. Soft, beautiful, glaucous foliage. Great plants. Really hardy, too. More hardy than they're usually given credit for. Oh, hey, there's a better view of them. Aren't they pretty? They're gorgeous for a yucca. And these are big. These are bigger than the ones that I bought last year that have already put on another year's worth of growth. And I paid a lot more than what these cost for them. It's not a ton more. Things are getting real tropical over here with the Exoras. I'd like to get another one of the cute little dwarf pink ones. Some Mammy Crotons back there. Beautiful. Beautiful acalphas. Aren't those gorgeous copper plants acalphas? Beautiful. Hey, bromeliads! How you doing? Oh, hello, Shadow. Look at all these bromeliads. The fireballs look cool. <laughs> Fire balls, I said that odd. They get really bright red in the sun. Super pretty. Red obsidian bananas. Always nice. Oh! Oh, look at this adorable little magnolia tree. Magnolias, so much prettier when you're actually down in the south. The ones you, you grow up north, we grow up north, it's just not the same. That, that sound, I don't know if you heard that. That was the car, that was not me. Look at this. Look at it. Hey babes, how you doing? Cute little Mediterranean fan palms. Oh, I love them. Some Washingtonias. I don't... <laughs> Any four dollars for that? Seems steep. Go ahead and get a small one. It'll be that big in six months. Hey, queen palms. You guys make me miss home. I miss my queens. These are cute. Also, grows pretty quick. Oh, love some Robolinis. Pretty palm trees, really good at stabbing you in the eye if you get too close to the inside of the trunk. Lots of Cordelin fruticosas, Exora, lots of fun stuff, oleanders, hibiscus, hibiscus, lots and lots, lots of hibiscus. And the Crotons, love them, love them so much. Ah, okay. No heliconias, that's what I'm looking for up here, or up here, down here in Florida at the Lowe's and at the other nurseries, but that's okay. There are other nurseries to go to. It's the best part of vacation, so I might go ahead and get this guy. Just because it's cute and I need my souvenir. I'm really digging these orange pom-pom double, like, huge flower hibiscus. They're beautiful, and I'm seeing them all over the... Well, you've seen them by now. But at the place I'm staying, along the beach and everything, they're so happy and cheery. They don't look anything like the doubles I'm seeing at home. And, of course, the tags just say, you know, hibiscus and... It's the Hawaiian Aloha Orange Hibiscus. I like them a lot. I'm seeing them everywhere up here. And this looks like the one that I have at home. Almost. The flowers, it might have more um, petals in there. But I didn't have a name on that one. Remember, it was just assorted. Do you have a name? What's your name? I need to get to know you. You're pretty. 
No names, that's all right. Yeah, seen everything. Oh, look at the little bit of bananas. The bananas. No matter how many I have, I'm always a sucker for more. These little guys are the poquitos. Like them a lot. I think that's everything at this location. So, moving on to whatever happens next on vacation. Well, I just found someone and asked them if they had any heliconias, and wouldn't you know? They just got some in. So let's go see. Ooh, there they are. Okay, how many can I fit in a suitcase? I'll just get as many as I want, and then the ones I can't take, I'll give to my family that live down here. That works great. Okay. I know it looks like a lot, but believe me, I can make it fit. And I still want more, because there's other varieties, and this is just one of them. Yeah, I only get down here so often. Gotta be a little bit greedy. Gotta make it happen. I can totally make this work. I think. We'll find out. I can do it. Oh, it's the prettiest card ever! There we go. Keep, keep looking at my plants. I'm like, go get your own. These are mine. Back off, please. And, oh my god, is he peeing? No. That would be not shocking, actually, with the things I've seen. But, not what's happening. Where's my, hello? Where's my ride? All right, listen, I mean, it's a tight fit, but I made it work. <laughs> Little car. So teeny tiny. May as well check out Home Depot on the way back, right? Oh my gosh, look at those clouds. Florida has some of the best clouds. But it's getting later in the day, so I'm just zooming through, like, really fast. Wow. Look at that Bogan Villa. It's beautiful. <laughs> gigantic. Hey, that is a cool Croton. It just says Croton, so don't know what variety, but it's cool looking. Palm trees, crepe myrtles, crepe myrtles. Aww, gingers. Love some curcumas. That's pretty. More croutons. I see some hibiscus. There are lots of exors. I'm not seeing pink ones. $20 Orange Bird of Paradise, the Regine. Great, fantastic deal. Then some nice plants. They're very well stocked at this store. Oh, and the cold hardy palms. I mean, they are. I remember when they first started doing this, they were selling them up in St. Louis, and I was like, no, no, no. You can't just tell the general public that they can plant Pindus in Zone 6 and they'll be fine. No problem. No, nope, didn't work. Okay, that was fun. Time to go. Oh, this is so pretty. Very pretty. Loving them. It is a gorgeous morning. It's the next day, and I'm thinking about going on a walk. <clears throat> you know, don't have a car here. So, there's a nursery that's like half a mile down the road. So, let's go there. That could be fun. And since I'm not driving, I'm not likely to buy anything. I mean, that's not necessarily true. I'm not going alone either, so there'll be other hands to carry things. But, yeah. Let's just have like a look around. It looks like a really cute place. It's right down the Pretty little Rulia. What you doing, squirrel? Just a heads up. I also have someone with me who sings nonstop, so you'll be hearing that. But you can't sing loud enough, that's gonna mess it. Are you gonna move, dude? Okay. Florida squirrels are ballsy. <laughs> nice, very gay to pit us forums. Palm trees! Got them crepes. Those are pretty, too. Here we go! Oh, here we go. That's what I'm talking about. These are so pretty. 224. I'll take all of them. 224 is not bad. These take a little bit to get that big. I mean, it's not a great price, but for retail and a touristy vacation area, it's not horrible. Oh yeah, they're very sharp. To be careful. <laughs> you like the one with the, the one with the broken branches? Yeah, it's got character. Nice fire bushes. Pretty. I like these. Cute! She said, it. this place is really cute. Look at it. So many things, it's adorable. It's a delight. Wow, Dichondra. Really nice big Dichondra too. It's beautiful. 
seeing some hibiscus. Oh, nice foliage and pretty flowers. No name, excuse you. Get out of the way, $16.95. No name, but very pretty. And it's all hot when you're not at the beach. It actually feels quite lovely. It's a nice day, it's only like maybe 85, 86. Humid, that's to be expected. Huh, Asclepius, I cannot find the regular Carasavacchio variety at home. I can only find these yellow ones. And I got the, what I thought were these, and they bloomed and they were the yellow variety, which is fine, but I just, I like the, I like these a little better. Oh, I like the trough planters too. Ooh, that is beautiful. That would make a really cool fountain. Oh, yeah, look at that. All kinds of stuff. The place is called like clay and pottery. I actually don't know. I can't remember. I'm sorry. It would look really pretty at home. So much shade. Ooh, hold on. Move. Look. Hey, bud. How you doing? I'm seeing a bunch of green anoles here, which is really, really cool. You know, the green anoles have been uh, kind of tormented and devastated by the brown anoles and the Bahama anoles. And uh, I've, I'm have i seeing them everywhere, and it's so exciting. I haven't seen the green anoles very much in Florida, at least not northern Florida, in years. Oh, I wish I could fit. We're just discussing big decorative lanterns and why on earth big ones cost $300. And I said, probably because of Instagram. Some sable palms. That's not going to fit in my suitcase. When I got here, I asked if it had any heliconias, and the answer was no. But look at that. Lies. Score. These are probably hirsutas, maybe. It could even be a type of ginger, but I'm pretty... Well, they're kind of fine at the top like a ginger. But the rest of them looks like a helicopter. I mean, I'm going to get it, and we'll find out in a few weeks when it blooms. How's that sound? That's some pretty pottery. I like this one, too. This has, like, a false patina on it. That's gorgeous. I can't touch things, because I'm heliconia ing right now. I have this, and it broke, because the dog knocked it over. And I haven't glued it back to... Get, what am I, I'm like I'm gonna take that home also yeah mine was like $25 $30 oh my gosh 315 mm, nope pass mm -hmm. <laughs> inappropriate I really like the fire pit that is so cute I'm loving this big blue pottery but I can already tell nothing here is affordable not that it matters we can't take any of it home but I mean this guy I can this place is really, really cute. It's just near an expensive area, so I'm not shocked by the prices so much. That's beautiful. The plant prices aren't bad. A little bit high, but not too bad. Got the sun and patience in the shade, how they should be. Add Nidia's. Ooh, Traveler's Palm. I love Traveler's Palm. It's not a good house plant at all. I've seen them for way more than that. Of course, that's all the way up in St. Louis. Mm, this is so pretty. I want it so bad. That would outgrow my garage very quickly. Lots of nice little palms and bananas. Whoa, these alacajos are big. Really big. And $90. Oh, I love you. Regal Shields, maybe? I remember there's one of these at a nursery at home I meant to get, and I haven't. I'm going to remember to that when I get home. It's like $15 at home, not as big, but I mean, it's an olive. They grow pretty quick. Quickly. I like the setup here with the pindu, and they've got some bird of paradise down here. The red bird of paradise. Lots of palms. Oh, needle palms. Okay, now there's a good price. $39, bucks, and these are decent-sized needle palms for $39. Those are normally very expensive. Now, that's not... Those would be very difficult to get home, I think. So, probably can't go that route, but... Great deal. Wish I could. These I can actually grow at home in my garden. I have several, and they do very well up north. Very, very well up north. I'm in 6A, 6B, and I don't have to protect them very much. When it drops below zero, I go ahead and put some frost cloth around them just to be safe. So many gingers. They make me so happy. 
So I'm gonna think about that. This place is just down the street. So I have some time to come up with ideas and stuff like that and see what I'll be able to get home. So I already like, got a lot of heliconias as you guys just saw at Lowe's. And they have these two, and they just say palm speg on them. I don't know what that means. They're a type of sable. The question is whether it's a sable miner or not. Usually when they have the split in the middle, you kind of see that split. That's usually what you see on a sable miner, but they also, yeah, I don't know. That's something I have to think about. I would rather have those over needle palms. I had some for years. And I'd like to get more. I don't want to unpot them to take them home though. Their roots don't respond very well to that. Oh, the Song of India. There's all kinds of awesome little plants tucked away everywhere. It's really pretty. The Stromanthias. I love those so much. This place is making me very happy. It's little, it's cute, and I love the way they have everything set up. I realize I'm talking very quiet. I didn't mean to do that. I'm so sorry. Yeah, wow. That was fun. I think we've seen just about everything. I might be back over here. We will see. Oh, you know what? Cardamom. Cardamom ginger give it a little bit of a sniff that makes sense it does have a very similar appearance to a small hirsuta wish it was it smells nice the smell on my fingers now could be worse it's not a terrible smell and it's pretty look at their mailbox probably shouldn't show their address but I mean like you're not asking for attention though come on that's really cute though it's adorable and pendo palms it makes me so happy look at the gate did you see the gate it's pretty that's a Okay, that's all. It's really hard to vlog with other people. Um, uh, Magnolia much? They're so much prettier down here than they are up at home where they're all like scraggly and suffering from having bad winters and everything. And that's not even a big one. I mean, it's big. But you know what I mean. Nice shady little break. It's a Rips of Excelsa Lady Palms. Hanging out in the shade. Looking pretty, I love them. They make me so happy. I don't have them because Millie bugs. It also is making me happy that I'm seeing more plants around that they wouldn't have normally plants around here like a decade ago. Like the Chinese fan palms and the lady palms and the, well those have always been here. Pretty. What a beautiful morning. Just sitting outside, having some tea. Enjoying the fresh morning air. I don't know why gazpacho ended up I was walking out the door to go to the airport and I was like oh yeah the treasure troll duh don't want to forget that and now here he is I don't I don't know I think I was thinking that like maybe you have like a really weird random photo shoot with the treasure troll in the I don't I don't know it was just kind of in go mode sort of just go with the flow and thought hey why not got the tripod set up for no reason, no clouds. When I got here, it started raining and raining and raining for days and days and days. But it, like, it would like stop and then rain and stop. You know, Florida rain, summer rain sort of thing. Everybody's been telling me that there's a drought down here. I think, I think y'all a bunch of liars. No, I'm just kidding. I know about the drought and everything. So it's good, I've been getting some rain. It's been waiting for some clouds. So I wanted to film some pretty stuff, but just haven't been around to do it. It's been a very busy several days here, and I just haven't been able to vlog. You know, it's hard when there are a lot of other people around, because it's just a lot of background noise. I'm not going to ask people to be quiet so I can vlog. You know, that would be a bit much. So everyone's just having a good time, but I've been through, like, looking at some of the clips I have. It's just nothing fits together. Other than going to Lowe's. And I did go back and go buy another Lowe's and grabbed one more Heliconia that was in orange. I guess, fine, I'll get up, I'll show you. One of these guys, one of just like the regular, I think it's the Andromeda type, like your typical Parrot Speak Heliconia, the others are the Lady Die. That's the only one I was able to find. I was hoping to get all of these, but no such luck. But that's alright, because I can divide them up and everything, no big deal. Like, I will take what I can get when it comes to these heliconias. And there were only like $12.50, $12.98. Such a great deal. Having them ordered, or ordering them and having them shipped up north comes out to like 45 to 55 bucks a piece, which is not very, it's very unnecessary. They grow like crazy. So at some point, I'm going to squeeze all of these into those, which I can do. It's doable. I may have to unpot one or two of them, and I can do that no problem. That'll be pretty easy to do. The needle palms, I'm still like kind of trying to figure out if I'm going to swing by there on the way out of town, grab some of those, and 
try and squeeze them into these. The uh, price on them like wasn't great. I'm pretty sure I can get them cheaper, so I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. I'm going to think about it. But they were on my list. They were something that I was like, oh, I need to grab some of those while I'm down there if I can find them for a good price and had a good size because I have a project I want to do with them. So I might give that a shot. We'll see. But if I do, it's going to be on the way out of town, so it won't be, I don't think I'll make it to the vlog. But it will be when I unpack the plants, which will probably be in the vlog. I'm trying to, can you guys see the, can you see the, nope, binoculars do not work on the phone. There's a lot of dolphins out there. It's been a gorgeous day. And it's hard to actually film down on the beach because, you know, wind, lots and lots and lots of wind. So coming up here, having a quick break from the sun, relaxing a little bit, thought I'd check in. Things are just all over the place though. So the update, went to dinner at Tommy Bahama, which was a lot of fun. It was a nice place. Prices were, I mean, what you would expect them to be at that place and in that area. Had some delicious jerk yuca fries. They were so good and a nice little flatbread pizza sort of thing. I don't know, it was on the vegetarian menu. One of the most delicious Long Island iced teas I have ever had. It was all very pretty, and I got to be one of those people who sits at the table taking pictures and video of their food. <laughs> Just because I wanted to show how pretty it was. It's funny, throw food on a wooden plank and all of a sudden it's like, ooh, fancy dining. Or like super cheap barbecue. You just, it can go either way. But that whole area was really cute. I don't know what it was called. I wish I did. The, they had the nice big date palms everywhere and things were lit up nice. The sunset was gorgeous. There have been a couple of sunsets this week that just blew my mind. Like just the other night we were watching Game 7 of the Stanley Cup. Blues won, which was great good for them it was a good game but in between uh the first and second period walked down to a pizza place which is like right outside the gates of this beach house and the palm trees and the sun and sunset that is it was just breathtaking the gorgeous pink skies and the pindus oh i love those pindu palms it's one of the things about coming down south that reminds me i need to get back into the pindus need to maybe drop some of the more like tropical looking palms and they're just they're so pretty they have such nice texture they're pretty easy to grow the messy but i mean pretty much all palm trees are messy when they're dropping seed and everything but yeah that was a good time cute little pizza place good pizza even like got one without cheese still very good i mean it's just bread sauce and veggies but very good and then uh, i didn't film anything at that lowe's because it was pretty much the same as the other one kind of a little bit different it was in panama city uh area not panama city beach panama city area. it's a i have a you know you did i don't know i don't think i should say it i can't say this is true for all of florida i've been to many 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 parts of florida multiple times but y'all in panama city beach with the drive-in oh my gosh i'm a very patient person but <laughs> the roads and the traffic's like hey it's 35 i'll go 17. Wait, that's a green light? I'm gonna think about that for like a solid, maybe like five or six seconds, then I'll go and then y'all can just, you can get the next one. Or, oh, I need to make a turn. Let me come to a complete and total stop and pause before I make my turn. <sighs> it's ridiculous. And people, people like to blame it on the senior citizen population. I see you. I look in those cars. This, that's not the case. It's a lot of people, you all just got your heads up your booties not paying attention. Like I said, patient person, but oh, oh, the driving out here has tested my nerves. Hence why there is no car here. A lot of walking. Well, but there are people here with a car. That's how I've been getting around, but just, oh, oh my goodness. So that's enough of that rant. Like I said, I don't like people blaming on the senior citizens. I've been watching everybody. No, get it together. Otherwise, everything down here has just been fantastic. <laughs> it's beautiful. Really cannot complain. So I'm gonna cut off here and maybe throw together like some pretty things I've been filming with a little bit of music or something like that. And then I'll pick up either packing up the plants or maybe heading home. I don't know, kind of depends on what goes on.
H. When I don't know what to say, for some reason I sing. Now there's a lovely thing to walk out the door to. Love sable palms. That was a big, big, big mistake. I'm walking down to the beach. Like, you guys haven't seen that since I just, just I swear I started everything. Oh, I don't just run around barefoot. I mean, I used to because it's fun and liberating. But, hold on, you want to know the code to get in here? Yeah, just kidding. Not doing that. I left my sandals on the beach. I've been up and down. See, I was hoping for a good sunset tonight, but there aren't a lot of clouds, so may not happen, but that's all right. I've seen some pretty good ones. That was fun. Started getting noisy again, though, so here I am. And I'm doing laundry, so all I have left is like, I feel like Mario. Do I look like? Can you see Mario? Yep, that's okay. Mario's cool. Well, this is it. Last night. Been here for a long time. I'll try and get some shots of sunsets and moon or something tonight, but I don't know. I guess you catch back up in St. Louis? Hopefully? I'm going to be pretty scatterbrained when it comes to editing this vlog, so... <laughs> well, nothing new there. Florida, you nasty. <laughs> Just kidding. I love Florida, but gross. I'm going to make this work. Shouldn't be that much of a problem. I do still have one left, but maybe I'll just like unpot it, throw a trash bag around it, and I can work it in there. Probably in this one, which is surprising, because I would think this one had more space in it. But, oh, did I... Maybe I pet... No, that's about this. I don't... Sorry. Thinking and talking doesn't always work first thing in the morning. There we go. <laughs> And that's how every plant nerd suitcase should look when they travel to Florida. <laughs> no, not really. TSA's gonna hate me. Because, you know, they unpack these things to check them out. And I know when I get home, things are gonna be bent, might lose some flowers. That's not a big deal, because these guys flower like crazy. So I'm not really too worried about that part. That's just sort of nature of the beast there. I can just gently fold these guys in slash smash them, so yes. Not going to be in perfect condition when they get back, but it will be good. I want to make sure it's not too tight, because I don't want it, like, busting open. There's a little bit of a bulge there on the side, but I think it's okay, and it doesn't weigh too much, I don't think. Should be fine. And then this one. I have other sandals. I couldn't find anybody who sold a size 12 sandal, so I got a size 11, which were, like, they kind of did the trick. They were only about, like, $10 at the outlet. Then I found a size 13 somewhere else, which also worked, but they slid around too much. Those were also really cheap. And then eventually I found a size 12. So I have a, an 11, 12, and 13 in here. They all kind of fit. These aren't, like, I don't know. Me and Adidas don't always work that great together. Wait, why was I packing the slides in the suitcase? This makes much more sense. Okay, time to go home. I'm gonna miss it here. It's been very pretty, very relaxing. Last night I figured out on my camera, finally, after all these years, I bought a, like, a special lens for nighttime photography and videography. It's just a, it's a Sigma 20 millimeter DG art. It has an F value of 1.4, which just means it can take in a lot of light at nighttime. And I found, I sort of figured out how to get the settings right so that it will expose things properly and do a time lapse where you can actually like see the earth rotating, but my battery died. So it's only a few seconds, but if you watch closely into the corners, this is nighttime. I'm going to slow it down a little bit. This is actually nighttime. I know it looks like daytime. That's just because it's slightly overexposed because I still need to figure out. I'm still like fine tuning how to do it. But if you watch closely in the upper left corner, you see those little dots. Those are stars. And then you can watch the moon move, watch the moon move across the ocean, the reflection, you can see the shadow of the clouds moving across the ocean. Isn't that cool? I'm sure I've replayed this. I will have had to have replayed it multiple times because my battery died, like I said, but, but I really wish I had figured that out before my last night here. Because if I could have set that up with an external battery hook to it and gotten like a four hour lapse, that would have been so cool. But now I know, so that'll be fun for next time.
finally. That was a very bumpy and scary flight. I don't normally get nervous on planes, but that was it was kind of rough. You could feel yourself coming out of your seat a bunch. Heliconias look good. Everybody did fine. They're, like I mentioned before I left, they'd be a little bit bent, but it's not so bad. Not too bad at all. Actually, I've already hosed them off and everything, but that's it with those. Really not much else to say. They look pretty much the same here as they did there, which means everything went well. I usually like to pack some sticks uh, to put in my suitcase and help kind of balance things out, but I forgot this time. Hey, Tuck, did you miss me? Did you miss me? He's a little mad because the first thing I did when I got home was give him a shot. Yeah, you got your shot. You good boy. I don't think he's actually mad. He normally doesn't care. He gets kind of excited after he gets his shot. But you know who I'm really happy to see. Puck, where'd she go? Pookin! Did you miss me, Pookin? No? You just busy being a cat? Yeah, good girl. She was excited to see me. I've been home for a little bit, like an hour or so. Had to unpack and everything. Do I get a kiss? Do I get it? Oh, we're going to play? We're going to play? No? Yes? No? Make up your mind. Make up your mind. We're playing. We're not playing. Ow. That hurt. Can you get a kiss? Thanks, pumpkin. You good girl. Y'all worn out from celebrating Toby? He went nuts when I walked in the door. Got so happy. And now you're back to being a Toby rug. You do you, Toby. That's the only way to be a Toby. You good boy, Tobes. You even acknowledge me? Thank you. Good boy. Hey, Tuck. You good boy. It's my favorite part about travel isn't just coming home to my pets, who I've missed so, so, so much. Had a great time, but I always miss my pets. Oh, and here's Charlie. People have asked about the other cat. Charlie, say hi. Okay. He's a very typical cat. He sleeps most of the day. That's why he's not usually in the videos. Let's go outside. I'm coming with you. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Toby, anybody? No? It's a nice day. Why aren't you? Nobody wants to come out. And then my other favorite part about coming home is seeing what my plants did while I was gone. It, you could see the flooding from the plane. It's pretty extreme. It rained the majority of the time I was gone, apparently. But it's now time to go ahead and see what the plants did. I will have posted kind of a garden tour, just the video prior to this one, and I intentionally waited until the day before this video came out so that anybody who watched that can watch this and then see what happened over two weeks. Probably not much. I don't know. I don't know how much of a difference there's going to be. It's been two weeks since I filmed that garden tour. But we can see the petunias and the sweet potato vines. They actually, I feel like those are a lot bigger. Right? Don't they look bigger? They look much, much, much bigger. People leaving their stuff outside. Everything over here looks pretty much the same. The macho ferns, I should have known this when I put those there. They grow way too big to have in the foreground. They get gigantic. So I'm going to need to move the macho fern because it's kind of blocking everything a little bit. But otherwise, things are looking good. I don't know if you guys saw, I tossed a fuchsia up there before I left. See the fuchsia? I don't think that made it into the video, but that's up there now. Supertunia, Vista Silverberry is doing its thing. Yeah, not a ton of change. The Caladiums are doing well. Let's see how the Caladiums are doing that I planted around that Alexander Palm. Yeah, those have done a lot in just, just under two weeks. It's like 11 days. A lot of growth out of these. I am going to have to pull them before they root too deeply. That's another thing I want to show everyone. Let's, let's go look at the next thing. That's like kind of it for back here. Everything else is pretty much the same. Well, this begonia has gotten huge, but I don't think that made it into the last video. I just dropped it in there. It's not even planted in there. The bananas are doing what bananas do. They're nice and big. You know, they'll put out a few leaves a week. So they've grown a bunch. Kalakajits have grown a bunch. Not a ton happened over here. Things are looking pretty much the same. And I'm probably going to end up redoing this. I'm not really crazy about it. It just, it needs something. And that's something I'm going to play with later. I didn't have time before because I needed to go on vacation. Oh, but the Thai Giants, they're good. Each one of these have put out a new leaf as well as these alakajas in the background. That one, remember, was the dormant one. And so it's opened up a new leaf. It looks like maybe some snails or slugs got to it. This one, though, hasn't skipped a beat. This one overwintered so much better than any of my other alakajas. These two, the one dormant one and the one I kept growing actively, did fantastic. Way better than those Borneo Giants. We've got a flower over here on the Apuntia. Isn't it pretty? 
It hasn't even opened all the way. So pretty. I need to weed this area, but you know, I don't like to weed around my cactus for obvious reasons. I need to just get some gloves. I have gloves, but they aren't gloves I'm willing to ruin because they get filled with those little glockheads, and I can't stand them. So these are the begonias over here. Not a ton's changed. It's going to take them a few weeks. They're more sturdy, though. They're standing upright, which is great. And those little alakaja divisions that I put in here, putting up new leaves and more sturdy. So that's good. Yeah, nothing's going to be that drastic because I haven't been gone that long. Overexposed. Whoa, would you please? Maybe that's a little bit better. Man, I need to get mulch down in here because the weeds are just coming up like crazy. But those have grown. Not a ton, but much more than they were before I left. Same thing over here. Why is everything so washed out and overexposed? Stop it. Yeah. Not a ton of change, but you can see where things are filling out. So what I'm thinking about doing, which I mentioned in that video, which will have just been posted yesterday, but it was filmed before I left for vacation, about maybe tucking those caladiums back into these corners and whatnot. It's kind of the only thing I can think of since the Japanese maple's gone. It looks so weird not having, even though it was dead, looks really weird not having that there. They're going to come out in a couple weeks and grind out the stump. I have a little bit of a rant. I don't understand what's with, it's been a problem. The last few times I've needed a company for something, I'm like, hey, I need a quote. And you don't hear from me. You have to, like, pester them. Like, why do I have to pester someone to get their business? It's very frustrating. This was supposed to be ground out and everything and contact them. They're like, oh, well, we didn't have you down. You were supposed to do blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, nobody ever told me I was supposed to do blah, blah, blah. It's annoying. But anyways, they came out, chopped the tree down. They'll be out in a couple weeks to grind the stump out. So I have to wait a few more weeks to replant over here, which is fine. It's going to be some time to think about what to do here. I don't know. It's going to take time. But you can see that, like... The shade-loving plants aren't loving not having the uh, big Japanese maple there. The planters up front are looking great. Look at how much growth has come out of the sun and patient. It's just gone absolutely crazy. Frydeck, I think, has been getting maybe just a smidge too much water, so I need to adjust the dripper on there. But otherwise, looks pretty good. The lobelia's doing its thing. You can see it under there. When that comes down a little bit further, that'll look a lot nicer. And, oh, the hanging baskets are looking great. I ran a drip line to them since I was going to be gone. I didn't want to have to ask someone to water plants when I have the drip systems. That was so chaotic, getting my drip set up right before I had to leave for vacation. And it was one of the reasons I didn't actually have the planters, these planters, hanging in the video when I set them up. Because I hadn't had my drip set up yet, and I didn't want to bring them out here and set them up and then move them all the way to the back because I didn't have water out front. If you remember that from the vlog last weekend where I was like, well... I needed to redo everything with my irrigation, so that all happened like two days before I left, but it looks nice, really nice. Um, not a ton of flowers on the Bacopa, though, which was something I was a little bit worried about, So I wasn't sure if there was going to be enough sun up here to keep the Bacopa flowering, and if that seems to be the case, I don't know, it's got some buds on it, so it might just be sort of resting right now, but if that is the case, pardon the airplane, there's a lot of airplanes flying by today, then I'll just replace it with the purple lobelia that was in the planter that I just showed you. That stuff down there. And this one over here, the bacopa. More flowers. Somewhat, actually. Not a ton. You can see the bacopa over here on this side has a lot more flowers on it. And uh, this is also, it's kind of unpredictable because the tree was just taken out I think this morning, yeah, that just came out this morning. That tree being on really, even though it didn't have any foliage on it, that really does change the lighting up here. So that's going to affect some things. I would really like to put a large pot back in this corner and put something really big and evergreen in it. I think that would be very pretty. Problem though is these urns are so tall that I would, I mean, it would have to be a gigantic pot to look right. If it's shorter than these, that would look weird. I could use, like, cinder blocks or something to hold that pot up. I was thinking about maybe putting that magnolia up here. There's a magnolia, Bracken's Brown Beauty, that I have that I could pop and pop into a pot. These are all those impatient seedlings. I mean, these are the ones I planted, and you can see the seedlings have pretty much doubled or tripled in size. So I'm just going to leave them and see what they're going to do. They get a little bit bigger, and I can mulch. Cause it's still going to be, like, a week or so until I mulch because of that situation over there. Not thrilled about that. Not at all. I'm going to try and get this planted up in the next week, too, because I would like to have something in there. Here's that magnolia. 
Not something you would typically keep in a pot, but when they're smaller, you can pull it off for a little while. It's more just a matter of lighting, but I think it would be happier in a much larger, it's still in its nursery can, so I need to bump it up to something bigger. The mimosa tree has some tiny flowers in it, but you're not gonna be able to see them. They're like tucked way inside. Let's check on the monstera. Oh, new leaf coming out. You guys, my gosh, these bugs, they're insane. They were bad before I left, but it's reached a point where, oh my gosh, stop biting me. It's much, much, much worse down on that end of the patio. There are these gnats that have been just pestering me for weeks. They're terrible. I've never had to deal with these before. They're called buffalo gnats or black flies. And they bite me. They, I mean, they bite everybody. They bite like around the eyes, ears, throat, whatnot. And they, like for me, I swell up. My lymph nodes swell up and it's just, I'm not happy about it. I've been spraying some of that cutter, the mosquito stuff. I sprayed some of that and that has drastically helped. I have a feeling I'm really have to stay on top of it because they're, absolutely horrible this stuff didn't stand up straight i did before i left just kind of had to sort of tuck some things in spots where they'd get hit by the sprinklers and just hope for the best okay it's weird i mean it's almost <laughs> don't worry about that it's almost july and i feel like i've gotten nothing done and that's partially because i haven't it has just rained so much I don't get anything done. I've been talking to some other people, who, you know, other gardeners in the area, and everyone's kind of saying the same thing. that We didn't even really get a spring because you couldn't do anything outside, which stinks, but, I mean, I'll take what I can get. And, I mean, things are beautiful, things are looking great, and there's still plenty of time to do a lot of fun stuff out here. This leaf, still driving me insane. I want to cut it off really bad, but I'm going to wait for this to open up one more one more leaf and then you gotta go because it's constantly in the way i don't want to forget about the lantana tree look at it look at what that did it just went into a full-on bloom mode it looks great doesn't it i'm happy that it did this so i could show it kind of closer to the lantana video because when i potted this up it was like just aging out of its flowers and the confetti kind of changes colors they open up yellow like you can see up here and then they age pink see see the pink they age to age to a pinkish kind of coral color very pretty and it is absolutely covered i need to be careful don't fall in the pool back it up so you can see it after this set of blooms i'm going to give it a heavy uh, pruning to tidy it back up because it's this you can see the growth is uneven there's long sprigs coming out here and then there's a shorter older growth in here with the seed heads and whatnot that need to be cut out of there but that was a very nice surprise. I'm also very happy with how the sweet potato vines and super tunias are doing in here. I'm not surprised that they would be growing a lot. because That's what they do. It's more so down here on this end of things where I can really... Oh, there's my nose hosel. That was not... It's always going to be a nose hosel from now on. That these were planted, you know, later than the ones down on that end. So I'm more pleased with the growth I'm seeing out of these. I will say, though, I'm thinking the sweet potato vines might still be an issue. Even though this variety I thought would be a little bit less vigorous, and I used two instead of three with each of them, you can look at this and see that, that this is just the beginning. There's still a few months of growing left to do, and I'm already to a point where I'm going to have to start pulling them out from in here so that they don't choke out those petunias. Like I was saying, I might pull them all together. I'm going to give it a few more weeks and see what happens and just do those two petunias in here. I like the pink and green a lot, but I don't... It's pointless if they're going to choke out the petunias. It doesn't make any sense. There's enough to do out here without having to make sure a few times a week I'm out here pruning the sweet potato vines. I don't really want to have to do that. Tropical planters looking good. You like that one, Tucker? That one one of your favorites? Okay, I have to wrap things up because the moment I walk away from fan chair, I'm just bombarded by these gnats. Even though spraying helps a little bit, that's going to take some time and you have to stay on top of it because... They just breed like crazy, and it's not like mosquitoes where as long as the water circulating, they're not a problem. No, they seem to like flowing water, so I don't, I'm going to try the mosquito bit granule things, but I'm more than likely just going to be like, no, I'm keeping these things clean. Might throw some mollies and some things in the different water reservoirs to eat the larvae and stuff like that, and continue spraying because I cannot deal. It's no, there's, what's the point of having a garden if you can't even come outside and enjoy it? Like I said, I have to stay near fan chair or else I just, it, I get bombarded by them. The fan blows them away, which is nice. Very helpful. I also should probably get a new fan, but for now this works and I don't have to pay for it. So I already have it. This is, this is fine for now. But I had a blast, was gone for a long time. I am happy to be home and to get back into gardening. It looks like it's going to rain like pretty much 
every day, but maybe it won't. We'll see. Hopefully it doesn't. If there aren't a lot of videos coming out next week, then that's why, because I haven't been able to be outside and film and whatnot. I'm going to take a few days to just kind of relax and, you know, get life back together, get back into the routine of things. And um, I'm going to do a video on Majesty Palms, somewhat reluctantly, but I found some for really, really cheap, so I grabbed a few. So try and do that. I mean, that's something I'm going to try and get done. I know it was a long one, but y'all been liking the longer vlogs, and last weekend's vlog was pretty short in comparison, so hopefully that's not a problem. If it is, then I don't... Too bad. It happened. Sorry. Not really. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out. Those of you who watched till the end, my ride or dies, thank you. Really excited about the Heliconias. Gonna be doing some stuff with these, too. Oh, and I did end up ordering the um, needle palms. I found them a little bit cheaper. There's a place I really like to order from. They'll get their own video when those come in. Oh, these bugs. I'm telling you, I walk away from the fan and they fly right into my mouth hole. It's really annoying. Oh, and now my ears. Okay, I hope everyone's doing well. Again, thank y'all for hanging out. Don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up. Helps the channel, it helps the videos a lot. I do appreciate it, so thank you. <laughs> and subscribe as well. And hit that notification bell, because I upload multiple times a week, and that way you'll know when new videos come out. I have my social media links down below. I'm on Instagram more than anything else. And I'll probably, even though I'm back, be still posting things from vacation, because I took a ton of pictures, and I didn't social media very much while I was gone at all. But that's, you know, the best place to get a hold of me. I might be getting rid of my Twitter. I haven't decided. Twitter's just a drag. So, I don't know. I'm thinking about it. Life's too short to be hanging out on a social media platform where everybody gets on and just emotionally dumps. And that's pretty much what Twitter's turned into. I'm really liking the new growth coming out of these Red Sister Cordelins. Very pretty. And the more they put out, then I can cut off that old growth. These are in rough shape. That's why I got them for super cheap. They were marked down. But I guess I could actually probably cut that off now. Couldn't I? I might do that. We'll see. But yeah, anyways, hope everyone's doing well, having a great day, great life, everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.